Hi, I'm Ed Roberson. You're watching Poets House Presents. I hope you enjoy. I'll be reading poems on the desk, not from published work. All these poems are sitting on a desk in draft and they've been reading, written since um, the be beginning of the year. Um, January through uh, April, they're all new. And I'm going to read 10 poems. First poem, Underway. The famed window sun shafts of Grand Central Station, those huge hung oars of change moving, the curtains waving, the commuter's coattail, so this is that station my dreams always take me through that i actually knew weekly on the way to sloan kettering cancer center until i didn't have to but, but last week you ordered away anchor poem two the social distance Looking down from the window into the bare auger sycamore tree in the park across the street, the surprise is how full of red-winged blackbirds it is. Those notoriously territorial bombardiers who will whiz your head, twist it off if you get too close, and usually fight each other away, but are here making a joyous gang of mating fuss, unlike us, distance socially away from spreading further pandemic, the laugh on us. These natural migrations have to be taken from the larger view, our local branch in course shaken. Third poem. Sonnet for the Ages. By the way, I found this little stash of hash when I unpacked the furniture that I pulled out of the storage from when I sold the house in New Jersey in the back of my manuscript closet. The cabinet with the music sheet staved layered shelves from the 19th century I bought in the 20th, here in the 21st unpacked on 32nd Street, now in Chicago. It's all there. Today, the lying asshole of a president, slyly blameless lethal dealer, said the pandemic, the pandemic he denied and missed preparing for is not like 13th century Europe. All the people going to die are like me, <laughs> the shit is still here, dried out. Remember the 60s? This is Ed Robertson, I'm 80. Number four, spring and all. So much defends the blatant blonde fool in the White House crazed with white, chicken to be seen, anything not nice beside the bloody fact. No idea, but in things there are no ideas in other than of him. So there are no things come of the Republicans follow I mean, Trump, that you won't have to spin some other dirty direction to dodge, which is the capital sting thing. The pure product of America elected itself as what everyone else had it wanted. It wasn't clear what it wanted was to do with itself other than 
don't let the blacks take over. See what happened? Even the finest stuff, the pure product of America, after 400 years, destroys itself from this for it. Ship of state. Some people in this country find themselves below the surface of a content that never intends to fill any container, not even full or otherwise, just black. A content meant to this country empty always. No matter how full the content of our character, the national scape will goad it through its history of white, horn, blaming, blaring, to strumpet every obedience to every achievement's virtuous goal the U.S. aimed for in its union. A surface everyone sees but cannot float the national vessel. A counterfeit of waves that can't define themselves into what holds up their ideals even when they happen besides themselves, the obvious neighbor, the hood living out right next door, not an example they'll take home, but rather burn like a Tulsa down to trump that, the trauma, back into circulation, fighting for survival again, instead of the correction working together again. The corrections not in the laws, words, but in the heads of the interpreters, in the honest, honest, unnegotiation of the compromises of the principle. What amazes? It comes as if on tiny, silent feet in the morning. Who said that? I forget. And what if tiny children, no higher than the mattress tip of sleep, wanting under the covers with you, holding in themselves something of birth left? If silent death, whose feet are not in this world, but whose arms can lift you into that other, it doesn't matter. What amazes is that both cling to you, love, and depend on you. The School of Orchid. When the blooms of my orchids drop, I continue to water and feed the leaves emaciating and weak. Four of my orchids have begun to rebloom. The translucent drop of green with its dot eye peering out of the loose ends. Four have continued to die their way to the shriveling, dry, crackling dust and clay. Unreturning death, death that returns nothing. Meanwhile, something about chop wood carry water, whatever is on my mind isn't, but like an orchid. In a station of the ether, the black rolling overnights that the men with assignments pull behind them like wasps, abdomen, the piece of pollen packed to their ear as a phone connection or they wear thin wire proboscis projecting them to the ether. They sing, mating to work, song, lines out their cell, work, wet black bow, work. Cold piece. 
Fallen into the Blues River of Van Gogh's monk, the singer didn't even have to swim. He simply was sunk deeper than he was already. His ear was already long gone, which was what they were singing that night in the church under the pinwheeling stars. The blues brush stroked like a river, oar brush danced the water. His ear was wandering off in the gunfire, looking for its pieces it wanted only again to hear. The gun shine sunned, echoing so long it became the sound of war, had to put on the black American galoshes to drown the bleeding out. It came out blue. The coat split his lip, not squished out. He came back and finished the set on 52nd. The headache, concentric rings around the marquee lights spinning, picking up a beep bop speed, looking for a fix where no dark clouds roll, he caught the train. This is history. Thank you for listening to Poets House Presents. I'm Ed Roberson, and I've been reading from poems that are on the desk in the last three months. The importance of Poets House to me is that uh, it's been with me for a long time, from the time they were on Spring Street, I met Nate Mackey, I met Quincy Troop, I met, and the list goes on and on. I read with Kamal there. This is probably one of the most important sites in my life, and it can probably be that to you too. It's a great place. That library is unbelievable. <laughs> you got to sit in that library. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give even a small donation if you can. Thank you.